in a previous video, we looked at the external load balancer uh, for, Win uh, for Microsoft Azure. In this video, we're going to talk about the internal load balancer. Uh, for this uh, demonstration, I've got three virtual machines, uh, SRV1, Web1, and Web2. All three of the virtual machines are on the same internal network uh, called Net1. Uh, on Web1 and Web2, I've installed IIS, and I've edited the default web page um, to identify which of the virtual machines is presenting uh, the web page. And I'll be testing this service from uh, Server 1, SRV1. Now, to show you um, the results that we should expect when the internal load balance uh, is, is configured, we're going to use SRV1 uh, to test the connection. So if I flip to SRV1 now, so this is um, SRV1, and you can see its internal IP address um, listed there as 192.168.1.4. The two web servers are 192.168.1.5 and 1.6. If I go to an explorer, you can see here that I've opened up a HTTP connection to 192.168.1.7. And you can see the, the web page identified has been presented by Web2. If we open up Chrome and use the same HTTP address, so here the same IP address, 192.168.1.7, but this time Web Server 1 is presented on the web page. Now this is an example of the internal load balancer. The internal load balancer endpoints are, uh, sorry, the load balancer is created based on a network, and then you assign different VMs to that load balancer. So uh, Microsoft Fabric Control then will keep an, keep track of this. So when a, a connection um, is made to the designated IP address for that load balancer, it's low, the connections and load bands between the, di the different endpoints that are part of that uh, load balance set. If we hit refresh enough times, so we hit refresh once there, we can see now that we've connected to Web2 from inside Chrome. This is, is a bit hit and miss, but again there you see we press refresh on in Explorer, and now we've connected to Web1. So my load balancing is working okay. And we're load balance between two endpoints. But let's take a look at how this was created. Now, when we created the external load balancer, we used um, the Azure management portal to add the load balance endpoints to our different VMs. And we said that the external load balance uh, endpoints now are accessed through the VIP, the virtual IP address, for the cloud service. Well, the internal load balancers for this VNet are created using uh, PowerShell. So let's, let's leave SRV1 and let's have a look at the PowerShell commands needed to create this internal load balancer. So as you can see here, we're using Windows PowerShell ISC um, I've already connected um, PowerShell to my Azure subscription, and you can see how to do that in a later video. The first command that we need then, the first command that we need, is the add-azure internal load balancer commandlet. This um, commandlet allows us to create a load balancer, and it's assigned a particular name. We assign the subnet that that load balancer is configured on and the cloud service that the load balancer will work with. Now, all of my virtual machines are in a cloud service called NGB Leads CS and they all exist on a subnet called Net1. And what this command is going to do is um, reserve an IP address. It's going to grab the next available IP address in Net1 and that will be the IP address that the internal load balancer service will now monitor. Now, once we've run this command, we can then run the get Azure service commandlet and pipe that to the 
get Azure Load Balancer commandlet to find details of the load balancer. Now that I've already run these commands, I've already run the add Azure internal load balancer commandlet. So let's just run the get commandlet here, the get Azure service, service name, pipe to get Azure internal load balancer. We'll just run that and we'll check its results. So here you can see uh, the load balancer's created. You've got the, the name for the load balancer, the service attached to, um, and crucially here, the subnet and IP address that's been reserved for that load balancer. So you can imagine in your DNS services now, you can map any host names that you want to be load balanced to this single IP address. So that might be www or whatever you need really could map to this single IP address. And then Microsoft services will now load balance this IP address to the different uh, VMs. But first of all, you've got to assign the VMs. So to do that, we need to get a uh, virtual machine and then use the add Azure endpoint commandlet to add a, a new internal endpoint. This is an endpoint that we cannot add through the, we can't add it through the um, Azure management portal. It can only be added through the uh, PowerShell. So the add Azure endpoint commandlet is used. We assign an endpoint name, um, a name for the uh, load balance set, and then um, protocol and port information. So here you can see we've added a protocol TCP, uh, local and public ports for the endpoint to use. And then crucially, we have the pro port and pro protocol. protocol. Now, uh, when if any uh, load balancer, we can use probes to determine whether the VM, whether this port on the VM is available. If the port's not available, then we uh, won't direct traffic in that direction. And typically you can use TCP or HTTP um, as uh, pro protocols. Here we've used TCP and specified a port of 80. So we're gonna test port 80. And in this example, we're gonna test port 80 every 10 seconds uh, on these VMs to uh, make sure that VM's online. Um, so we've got the probe port, probe protocol, and probe interval. And then finally, the name of the internal, ba internal load balancer we've created in the previous commandlet, our ILB. That is then piped to the up Azure, update Azure VM commandlet we updates um, our Azure VM, in this case, web two. So three commandlets using this section, get Azure VM to get a uh, web two, piped to the add Azure endpoint commandlet, which in turn is piped to the update Azure VM commandlet, and that will update the uh, endpoints. Um, just a, a very quick note, notice a little um, tick at the end of uh, line seven. Um, that little sort of tick there just m means that the, the, the line has carried on. So the minus probe interval parameter could have been typed directly after the probe protocol parameter. But by using that little tick, we're saying carry this line on and it's just so we can see more information on the same page. Um, I've already run this for both web one and web two. So if we then run the get Azure VM commandlet, piped to the get Azure endpoint commandlet, and we'll do this for web one, and give that a second to run. We see the uh, external endpoints for remote desktop and PowerShell. Actually, these actually the, the, in the local ports, the internal ports, sorry. And at the top there, you've got the new endpoint that we've added that's part of our internal load balance set. So uh, with that, uh, we're low balancing traffic, any traffic sent to 192.168.1.7 now will be low balanced to both web two uh, and web, web, web one. So we've looked at videos now for the external load balancer, uh, the internal load balancer. In a later video, we will look then at traffic manager.